Shrewsbury break Derby Hearts at Pride Park Stadium. Another abject performance in my opinion. I just don't quite think we got going again. It's another one of them games where you look at it and you go, we've got to be picking up three points here. Now, I think, I'm not sure if it was this game or the Exeter game coming up that I predicted that we'd drop points or we'd lose because it's them games where you know we should be getting something where we just don't seem to put on the performance. And it's another game where we have the opportunity to create a gap. It's got, you go back to the Peterborough game, the opportunity to go into second place. Uh, the Reading game, the opportunity to go top of the league. And now today, the opportunity to build a gap on third place. I think it would have been four points if we'd have won. Maybe even three, something along those lines. But it's another game where we've had the opportunity to build a gap and we just haven't done it. Now, if you have enjoyed this video so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're trying to hit 200 subscribers by the beginning of March. So make sure you hit that red button. It's completely free. Thank you. The game itself, like, it, it's another game where I just don't quite know what we're trying to do. Like, yes, we've got... Nathaniel Mendes Lang out on the left. You've got, no, well, he started through the middle. We started with a back three. Aaron Cashin was injured, and Wild Smith came back into into the sticks, which I didn't have a problem with. I thought he had a half decent game. Now he didn't make a million saves, but I thought he was comfortable, composed. I thought Cashin and Bradley, not Cashin and Bradley, Nelson and Bradley had a good game, um, and we changed Ryan Niambi late on, and I think that had an impact on the goal. But obviously. Paul Warren didn't take the ambi off to make us weaker. Didn't take the ambi off for the sake of it. It was like, there was obviously an issue. I believe he said something in the press about his knee. Obviously, Adams goes down with cramp and we see Wilson coming on. And I was like, oh, we're going to go for it sort of thing. And then we, like then Tomo comes on as well. No problem with Tomo. I don't think Tomo did anything wrong coming on. I just think it's it was just disappointing. And... It's another one of them games, especially at home. I think we've done it three, four, maybe five times now. The most notable ones are Peter Burr and Posh at home, where we concede late on. And like I think both of them games, we dropped a point at Peterborough. Um, we dropped two points with Portsmouth. And it's those results that at the end of the season mean the most. It's like it's another game where we've dropped two points. If we'd have picked up them two points, we'd be two points better off. Pick up the extra point at Peterborough. Pick up the extra two points at Portsmouth. And it just always seems to happen at home. Now, obviously, there's the Reading away game where we were very disappointed and came away losing. And we also lost John Jules that night. And he's out for what seems to be the rest of the season, according to Paul Warren in the press. So it there's a lot of disappointing factors going on with Derby County at the moment. And the... It, it just doesn't seem to be clicking. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we qu we came into this game off the back of two wins. But they're not games where we've been outstanding and we've deserved to come away with three points. It's games where we've done what we need to do. We've got the points. Now, and that's fine come the end of the season. But at this moment in time, when you're looking forward and you're like, we've got Exeter on Tuesday who beat Peterborough couple of weeks ago well it might have been last Tuesday something along them lines then we've got Stevenage and Barnsley they're three really really tough games and I just don't quite know where this performance is going to come from to beat these teams now Stevenage aren't far behind us Barnsley aren't far behind us and if we want to be getting automatic promotion Bolton have two games in hands on us and we've got to we've got to build a gap to them so that it's a harder task for them, but we just don't seem to, when we get the opportunity, when results are going our way, to do it. Now, I do have to give a bit of a word to Max Bird. I thought he was excellent today. I think the introduction of Ibu Adams into midfield has really freed up his and Conor Horahan's role. And I think Ibu could be a massive difference towards the back end of this season. Still waiting to really see Corey Blackett-Taylor catch fire. Now, obviously, he didn't come on today. He didn't play against Charlton. He played at Reading and looked all right, started the game after. It wasn't that he was iffy, I just don't think he was ready to play, to be quite honest. And obviously, it's that time of the year where you're not really training because matches are coming thick and fast, but he's got to come in at some point, he's got to catch fire. Not quite sure what was going off today. It was just a bit of a disappointing game. 
And it was just a bit of a disappointing game. We've we've had these over the past few months, and especially this year, I think I think we've collected something like thirteen points out of twenty four. It might be fifteen, but it's something along them lines. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not horrific, but it's not where we need to be. It's not where we was before. Now we've got the return of Corey Smith on the bench. Hopefully we've got the likes of Washington and Waghorn back into the coming games. Vickers is going to be out for a couple of weeks with a quad injury. So Wild Smith will be deputising while he's out. Now, I assume Wild Smith will do enough to keep his position. But who knows with Paul Warren, he could make the decision when Vickers is back to put him straight back into the lineup. But we will see. Um, cash in should be fit and ready for Tuesday night. I'll have a preview out for that game on Monday morning so make sure you're all subscribed and tuned in for that so yeah that's my opinion I'm going to chuck it into some game footage now let me know down below what you think about the game let me know what you think heading into Exeter let me know what your team predictions would be and I'll catch you in the next video Make sure to go and find me on TikTok, pictured here, and Twitter, pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and football weekend.